Hi guys, welcome to the last Save the Cat live stream part 10, the final installment of the Save the Cat experiment where we're outlining a novel live with you. Um, how are you guys tonight? Let us know in the comments if you're here so we know who all is here at the last Save the Cat live stream ever so far. Um, and what's been your favorite part of the series? We really wanna know what was your favorite thing that you got out of this. So if you're here, give us a shout out let us know what you're loving. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about the finale and the final image. Nope, I said that backwards. Nope, that's right. <laughs> the finale and the final image. And believe it or not, they're very different things. So we're going to go into that. And it's actually a very, very big beat tonight. Two beats, one is massive. And so just so you guys know, the playlist is linked below if you missed any of the lives before, but you don't have to watch them in order. We are going to help you just with the end of your novel tonight. So if that's what you need, Welcome. <laughs> um, and so Brittany is going to start us off with a super fun announcement slash vote. Yes. yes, you guys, we have been talking about naming or giving like a working title to this story we've been outlining with you guys. And we um, on Bethany's Twitter account, we had a poll for you guys with four different options. And literally two of them were like neck and neck, like 35% for both of them. So we um, asked you a little bit last week, but tonight we are going to take one last final poll for these two names. And we want you guys in the comments um, down below or in the chat box live to tell us um, your absolute favorite. Um, so we have of Earth and Sky, and obviously that is talking about the two tribes that we have, the shifters of the sky and the shifters of the land um, or the earth. And um, so a lot of people love that, but we also have Ink of Fate. And that is because we have these tattoos that all the shifters have that sort of identify which tribe they are in. And obviously there's a lot of uh, fate going on that uh, they have to deal with. So we love both of them and we're really stuck on which to choose. Um, so you guys definitely let us know right now in the chat box, which one's your favorite? Yes, please let us know. <laughs> and this is a working title, but it could be a final title too. They're both amazing. Um, they're both by you guys, by the way. <laughs> um, so tonight we're going to talk, while you're typing in the comments, please vote. We're going to talk about the short synopsis, uh, which we'll go into in more detail. And then we're going to share what we decided on from the two weeks ago, the all is lost, the dark night of the soul, and the break into three. We're going to tell you all the final-ish um, decisions. Then we're going to review what the finale and the final did I do that wrong again? No, the finale and the final image beats are, we're gonna like go in depth into what all those entail. And then we're gonna brainstorm those beats for our actual story with you guys. So very excited about that. Um, and make sure you stay till the end because we're going to maybe share some ideas for what might come next. Yes, we're wrapping this series up. It's been 10 episodes, but we have some, yeah, some ideas that might like sort of spin off of this Save the Cat experiment. So even though we're gonna definitely need a break, um, yeah. <laughs> there's some ideas that we have we want your opinion on. So yeah, stay till the end. Yes, because this has been really fun, guys. We really appreciate you all being here and hanging out with us every Wednesday. <laughs> uh, so Brittany, do you wanna start off the recap of all the, I guess the short synopsis, we should start there. <laughs> Yes. So guys, last week when we were interviewing Jessica Brody, which if you haven't seen that episode again, it's a link in the playlist below. Jessica Brody, author of Save the Cat, writes a novel, was with us and it was amazing. We got to ask, ask her all the questions and yeah. everything she shared was gold. So um, that was awesome. But we shared with her um, the log line for this story um, that is in the back of Save the Cat Writes a Novel if you want to learn how to write your own log line. Um, but then you can also write a little bit longer short synopsis. And that is found on page 270 of the um, Save the Cat Writes a Novel book. If you want to look it up for yourself, basically um, in the first paragraph, you set up um, the setup, the flawed hero and the catalyst, only two to four sentences. Then in the next sort of section, you break into two and or you talk about the fun and games in two to four sentences, and then you um, say the theme stated in the final one to three sentences along with the midpoint, sort of like a hint at it, um, and or a hint at the all is lost with a cliffhanger at the end. So um, again, that is on page 270 if you wanna look into it, but instead of going through every single part mm -hmm. of our story tonight, we're gonna give you our short synopsis. Um, if you want to look at every single beat, again, you can go to um, our outline with us website 
website, go to the outline page, sign in with the secret password, and um, you can read all the details. But here is our short synopsis. Again, it is a work in progress. We just put it together today. Everything about this series has been a work in progress. Yeah. Yes. So then you guys can see the full process. So this will get tons and tons better as time goes on. But just to give you a little recap, <laughs> here's what we have. Um, so two shapeshifter tribes that have been in a cycle of war and revenge for we don't know how long, centuries maybe. <laughs> that out. Uh, their magical tattoos indicating to which side they belong. Those that shift into birds of the sky and those that shift into beasts of the land. So we have a little bit of a setup here. Then we go into the actual story and the characters. Lore, heir of the Sky Tribe, is a skilled shifter with a strange or forbidden griffin tattoo um, that she has, that she must keep a secret. When her father is murdered, Lore seeks revenge on Thera, the heir of the opposing tribe. But when Lore finds out Thera has the same tattoo and her own tattoo and abilities suddenly disappear, Lore searches for answers. Uncovering the true murder is one Uncovering the true murder, uh, murderer, sorry, I can't read that. <laughs> Uncovering the true murderer is one of her own. Lore must work with Thera to stop the evil plot and their tribe's revenge cycle before one tribe wipes out, wipes out the other. That, the ending sort of part is something that we're probably gonna, it's gonna maybe shift tonight as we talk about the finale and the final image um, and figure out exactly where this story is going, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you were posting it in the I comments. Did, I, was gonna say. I was like, for anybody who visually just needs to see it, because that's how my brain works, I posted it for you so you can read through. Brittany did yeah. like most of that. She's a genius. My brain was like dead after blurbing my own book the last like three weeks. So this is like really good, you guys, and I can't take credit for it, but um but i did see a lot of votes for inca fate and at least one for earth of sky earth and sky i'm saying my the own thing and then i also saw somebody said um jody said are you putting it up on wattpad and stay tuned until the end you guys we will talk about you know options that's all i'm going to say right now <laughs> yes agreed <laughs> um, so we're going to go over really quick what we talked about last week, not last week, two weeks ago. I keep saying last week, but it's been two whole weeks since we did the all is lost, the dark night and the break into three. So maybe I'll start with the all is lost and we'll just take turns reading. If that sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. So the all is lost. Um, probably the biggest part of it is this whiff of death. And if you guys have read it, then you're going to know what I'm talking about. Um, Lore is going to, we have two options that we've kind of set aside for her all is lost moment. And both of them, you know, could work going forward. So it's not going to affect um, the following plot points, but this is what we have so far. Um, she either is seen shifting into a grifton by her boy crush Bjorn, um, and he would go and tell his father, the advisor, who finally has the ultimate ammunition to keep her from leadership. And so he sets them off on a witch hunt, like the whole tribe against her. Um, or option B is that maybe the advisor is the one who sees her change. And then Bjorn, the boy crush, warns her that he knows that the advisor knows that she can change into a griffin. And so that is where the witch hunt comes into play. But either way, there is a witch hunt out to get her. Her midpoint or her all is lost is a deep all is lost. And then Thera gets word that her mom is dying. Um, whether she actually is or not, we haven't decided, but she's going to believe that it was her fault that Thera hurt her mom when she scratched her in griffin form somehow. And so she and Laura are going to go off to see Thera's mom in secret. Yeah, so this brings us into this dark night um, where lots of mysteries are revealed. Yeah. And this is where, at least for now, we've decided that they are going to find out that they're sisters. Um, we're figuring that the mom on her deathbed is telling them both the truth. Um, maybe she, we don't know if she recognizes Lore or somehow she connects that this is her other daughter. Um, and so she gives sort of the backstory of why they were separated. Um, and they should, we have a note that they should probably also find out or discover the truth and the depth of the meaning behind their tattoos within this, which is something that we have to continue talking about tonight. Um, and then whether someone tells them this or they sort of figure it out 
themselves because like certain thing, other things have fallen into place. So if we've planted things throughout the rest of the story, this is sort of the place that all of those things come to light and it's like, oh, the pieces come together. <laughs> then we've got this break into three. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So basically our big summary for the break into three is that they decide to work together. Um, and we have some ideas like they, they're going to plan to fix things the right way, which for them is going to mean somehow getting rid of either the dream ceremony and the current rituals around that, um, or maybe the purpose of the tattoos and possibly returning to the old way or the better way that unites them. So this is really like the break into three really is just that they decide to work together and then the how is going to come into play tonight as we're brainstorming the final image um and the finale gosh i keep mixing those around they sound the same to me um but really quick we thought we'd share with you guys maybe just some ideas like some direction we have that we have talked about in the past so you know like you have a starting place as you listen to us explain the finale and the final image so should we go into that really quick? <laughs> yes, we should. Would you like to do some of them first? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, where to start, right? Uh, so we have like we have like two ideas. So I'll kind of talk about one, Brittany can talk about the other, and then our third option is to combine and create a mixture of these two things. So we'll go into this more, but the first one is kind of a bittersweet um ending where the tattoos are like completely destroyed and you guys probably remember this from previous videos where we talk about they destroy the dream ceremony or the location or the ritual somehow they destroy everything whether it's the actual place or something in it and so we haven't decided how much they're destroying but we know that it would probably result in like um, a third tribe of people without tattoos so it's like an annihilation of tattoos um but there's still people who have them so there's still this bittersweet like maybe there's some shapeshifter children in the future that you know they can't get tattoos anymore but there's still the old people with the tattoos that originally had them who maybe don't want to um, merge the two tribes so that's that first option <laughs> yeah so we have this like yeah bittersweet kind of ending the tattoos mm -hmm. in that scenario they are entirely bad and we mm -hmm. want to get rid of them but we also have this sort of option that you guys have talked about where it's not that they're totally destroying the tattoos. They're sort of purifying the tattoos as if like the dream ceremony and the tattoos have been um, twisted or uh, tainted and now they need to purify it or recreate it. Um, so everyone at the end who is left alive <laughs> um, is, is in this version is on board with um, the change, with the purification. And there's a new version of the tattoo that happens that sort of unites the clans. Um, and it sort of returns to the original intent of what the shifters were supposed to be. And this sort of meaning that they all become griffins. They all are able to shift um, into both birds and animals. And there's unity and harmony and all that jazz um the third option did you yeah. want me to say this one or do you, would yeah, you go like for it yeah okay so the third option is last week or two weeks ago a bunch of you were like is there any way we can have both it's like we want the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we like the tattoos and like yeah. how do we keep them together so um the combination is still um though the, sort of having like some kind of destruction but in the midst of that, having some kind of recreation or some mm -hmm. kind of purification. So maybe the dream ceremony or the place gets destroyed, but they're able to, to, in the process, recreate or purify the tattoos or some version of that. So in this, um, there can still maybe be some of um, the shifters that remain against this purification or against this change. Like maybe it's something that you can choose that you, it doesn't happen to you, but you have to like and take this step to like make that happen. Um, and in that way, again, we would have this like third kind of tribe situation happening where Thera and Lore would sort of be the heads of those that want to go through the purification process. And this was sort of like our most popular, I think, idea yeah. last week. Um, it's just honestly, um, a process of figuring out all the details. So I think either way, we want to destroy something, we <laughs> want a battle, we want this finale to be real big, and we're gonna talk about why and why the finale should be big in a second. Um, but yeah, we have to figure out 
sort of made that final decision of which way are we going. And so definitely, as some of you are already starting to do, let us know what you think about these options. And yeah. if you have sort of like an idea of how all of those things could fit together, also Ooh. somehow wrapping in this advisor and his like evil plot, which we still haven't fully <laughs> forgot about. <laughs> Figure it out, you know, like he just he wants to be the ruler of the Sky Tribe, even though he doesn't have any right to be. Mm -hmm. So he's like trying to kill off Lore and like his her dad and like oh, uh, but we don't know how this all ties together. So help us. <laughs> yes, yes. So sh like in the comments, like Brittany said, let us know, like if you want to combine, if you want bittersweet, or if you want the purifying. Like those are kind of our options. What we've titled them, so we can kind of know right when you comment, like which direction you want to go, um, get rid of tattoos or keep them and make them better. Um, and so I'm seeing some comments already. Ingrid says she likes the tattoos being bad. It's just so much more dramatic. Without the tattoos, everyone can shift into their true form, but the tattoos were created to make sure the tribes were kept separate. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's definitely one of the options for sure that sums it up so well. Uh, by the way, a lot of people are now voting of Earth and Sky, Brittany. So now I, know. I, I saw all in good faith, and now it's <laughs> yeah, Keep voting. Let us know. Yeah, um, you guys are just showing up. We want to know: Do you want this story to be called, at least for now, yeah, of Earth and Sky or Ink of Fate? So <laughs> let us know. Yes, let us know. Um, should we? I don't know. Should we keep like? Should we sit on this, or should we go right into the finale while you guys are sharing with us what your favorite type of ending is? Yeah, I think maybe we'll do, let's do the recap so they have like a little more time yeah. to type. And we yeah. can tell you guys, yeah, just like a basic, basic overview of what the Stacey Cowardson novel book sort of describes each beat that we're going to talk about and brainstorm tonight. Perfect. How about you kick us off? We'll just go back and forth. <laughs> awesome. So let's look at the finale as a whole. And then mm -hmm. what they do, what she does, Jessica does in the book, and what Save the Cat does is they break up the finale into five main sections. So overall, the finale um, is when all problems get resolved and the hero proves that um, the hero has learned the theme and been transformed, right? Because this is a journey of transformation for our main character. Um, they have made the decision to act. Now is when they do it. Um, this is the final test, and we're wondering, can they pull it off? Um, it's a long, multi-scene beat that actually spans the entire, or most of the entire third act, where the hero enacts this plan that they came up with in the break into three. Um, this is where we have, again, the five-point finale, or the storm the castle, um, mm -hmm. where they either win the games, they stop the villain's plan, they win the girl, they save the day, whatever we've set up to happen. Um, a common question that comes up is, do you need all five that we're about to talk about? And Jessica says, not necessarily, um, but a finale should, shouldn't be easy. It shouldn't be over too quickly. Um, there should be struggles, conflicts, obstacles. You want to make them, make the main character work for the transformation and work for the outcome. Um, make act three as turbulent, wrought with action and emotion as the rest of the story and your novel will be elevated to a whole nother level. So. So it's like mm. the pinnacle. This is the climax. Yes. Um, so I'm going to let Bethany do the first point in the okay. five point finale. Awesome. So the gathering of the team or the tools is the first part, um, which, you know, if they don't have a team, that's why she says slash tools. Uh, so for example, they need their allies. They need to assemble the troops. They need to maybe mend some bridges. Maybe they need to admit that they were wrong or stupid to their friends and kind of like rebuild those friendships and bring those people back onto their team to help them. Um, or if they either don't need a team or they it's just not fitting your plot, maybe there aren't any people around, then they can gather their tools and basically just have a preparation kind of moment where they're getting their weapons, their supplies, they're making plans, they're laying out the route, the route, however you want to say that, depending on where you're from, uh, and figuring out what the plan should be, which leads to... <laughs> yeah. Number two, which is executing the plan. So now they have their team, they have their tools. Now they're going to actually enact the plan again that they came up with in Break Into Three. Um, this is the literal storming the castle, usually or figuratively. Um, they make sure there is a sense. We have to make sure as writers that there's a sense mm -hmm. of impossibility at this point. Um, we're wondering, can this really work? And it is a, um, a moment 
um, and should seem crazy at first, but as the team works together, there's a growing sense of this might actually work. Mm -hmm. um, this is where the quirky secondary characters usually get their moment. So we, again, as we're plotting, can think that. of some of those secondary characters, yeah. like our boy C Crush Bjorn. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we have uh, strange skills, device, or idiosyncrasies you've set up early in the earlier in the book. They pay off at this point. Like, why was that even mentioned? Oh, that's why they found that. That's why that's there. Um, they also, um, sometimes there is a B story sacrifice. So someone might die, take a bullet for the hero, move aside to allow the hero to shine. Um, and that means that the hero is forced to do it on their own in the final moments, showing that they have what it takes. So again, great story for that guys. And then we have the third one. The High Tower Surprise, which is like a catalyst again. It's like the fourth one in the book if you're counting the catalysts and then the debates and all that that go on throughout the novel. So all seems to be going well until this surprise moment, this High Tower Surprise. Um, she describes in the book that like a classic fairy tale where the hero storms into the castle and they reach that highest tower to save the princess when, surprise, the princess isn't there. Um, so the bad guys, maybe they led the hero into a trap. So usually it's this, it's basically your plot twist, your biggest plot twist in the book. Um, so it's going to show how overconfident and naive the hero and their team have become. Um, it's going to show how the antagonist is worse than we thought, maybe a little bit more capable than we thought. And this plan that they originally had was never going to work. It just wasn't that easy. Um, so the surprise is like another insurmountable twist that will force the hero to prove their worth and prove that they've weren't learned their lesson. Awesome. Um, so then we move into the fourth part of mm -hmm. the five part finale, which is dig deep down. Um, this is, you know, every time we have a catalyst, we have a little debate. So this is a debate moment. Um, the hero has once again seemingly failed and has nothing left. They have no plan, no backup, no hope. And yet they still have something deep down inside of them that will turn out to be the most important weapon of all, which is whatever your theme of the story is. <laughs> yeah. the law they've overcome, the proof that they've changed. Make sure it's something they never would have done at the start of the book. Um, I'm already thinking of like Laura exposing herself. Yes, yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so maybe we don't do that until like the book moment. Um, sorry, getting ahead of myself. Uh, the hero <laughs> digs deep down and pulls out the shard of glass, removing their flaws at the source and becomes victorious. Then the hero takes a leap of faith with no net to catch them and is has this like touched by the divine moment um, where it's like, ah, and they... Yeah step that they're supposed to make. <laughs> Let's do the final step of the finale. Okay, yay, so that means they execute the new plan. That's the fifth one. So it's their action moment. The hero puts this bold, innovative new plan into action. And of course it works, finally. Um, the human spirit slash perseverance prevails and it's gonna resonate with your readers. Um, so there is that question though of what if they fail? Like maybe there's a point to failure. Maybe they learn from it. Maybe they learn it's better to try and fail than to never try at all. So whatever it is, whether they actually succeed or whether they fail, there's like a lesson in this, um, something that's gonna resonate with your reader. So it's it can be like a flashy ending to this transformation, like a climactic finish that pulls the entire message of your story into focus and leaves the reader with something to remember, something to ponder, and just it resonates deep within their soul. So no pressure, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Only yeah. the most important part of your book. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, shoot. And there's more. So um, we're going to brainstorm on that. But really quick, the final image is pretty short. Do we want to just really quick want to cover that one for us, Brittany? Sure. Yeah. So after this whole big climactic finale, you end with a final image that totally sort of caps off your book. Um, and you show a snapshot of your hero after the finale, after the win or the fail or whatever it is. Um, you show their new life after that, after the transformation and how much they have changed. So this should be um, completely opposite from the opening image. So we can show again that your character has changed. Um, show that the hero, what the hero looks like after the epic transformation is complete. Um, the questions you're asking are how far have they come? What have they learned? How much have they grown as a human being? 
What does their life look like now that they've journeyed through the dark night, uh, faced their demons, ripped out the shard of glass and come out on the other side better and stronger than ever before. Um, and again, you're showing all of this. You're not necessarily telling it. You are using an image or a scene to exemplify all of this. Um, your reader can clearly see how this story has changed the hero for the better. And um, to make it count, set up a flawed hero in act one. So this is sort of like a little wrap up of everything. Set up a flawed hero in act one, take them on a wild ride in act two, make them prove their worth in act three and pay off all your hard work with this final image. I love that. Yes. So that's all we have to do tonight, you guys. <laughs> um, and we do have some amazing comments coming in, Brittany. I haven't even like read them. I've just like seen them coming in. So we should take a quick second to yeah. go through. Um, so the first one I saw was like everybody saying which ending they like, you know, the purifying or the combination. Um, and so I'll start with like, I see JJ says um, combination, but then she goes into why or how maybe if the advisor tainted the tattoos or the ceremony it could be purified by destroying what he did to cause the problem so if he was the problem um or maybe his um brainstorming here in like a quick moment maybe it was like his ancestors so he knows that he's the problem that they did it or something <laughs> um kelly says purify can still show that the tattoos are currently bad and they need to be changed but we'll still keep the ceremony that is important to their culture which mm -hmm. i love that so it's like don't throw out the what's the saying the baby with the bath water mm -hmm. um, and then let's see JJ, oh, somebody's responding to JJ. Leslie says, I like that idea. I thought the advisor and priests of the ceremony, whoops, um, part, were part of the conspiracy to keep the tribe separate and the girls purify it, maybe. So, kind of like there is somebody in the background who's against it. Yeah. Um, and that's where we haven't officially put these like priest ideas who like yeah. run the dream ceremony into the story yet. Um, yeah. I mean, I, they could just as easily sort of be inserted, I think, as like background. Yeah, definitely. It's one of those things like if we need them, we'll throw them in there. <laughs> um, I can let you read a couple, Brittany. I'm at Ingrid's uh, comment. Sure. Um, is that where it says maybe Thera dies? Yes. Oh, my gosh. So mean. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad. Maybe Thera dies. She saves her sister by being good enough. Only she could save her, but sacrifices herself in the process. And Laura goes to lead the new world, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and then she also agrees with JJ. Um, but it's going to be on for a while, oh, right? Maybe that's for the above one. Let's see. The advisor seems oh. like an antagonist, so he could use it to control both the tribes and then the purifying, it would stop him. And then Leslie agreed with that, I think. Okay. That maybe this has all been going on for a while. Like the advisors known about it. Maybe if there's priests, they all knew about it. Um, yes. And then she agrees with Ingrid too, that it would be bittersweet and interesting if only one survived. You guys are killing our people. What the heck? <laughs> I'm just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although technically, according to my hubby, that is what makes a good story is some death. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Um, yeah. So where do we go from here? Should we brainstorm beat by beat? Or should yeah. we kind of feel like we want to know where we're going with these tattoos first, which like, you know, combination, bittersweet or purifying? Do you think that'll influence our decisions at all? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, at least with you guys that are here, maybe we, yeah, we pick a direction. Mm -hmm. um and with your stuff so let's say that um things have been unpurified for a while i feel like we've sort of been talking about like the last few um comments mm -hmm. um so maybe we start off in that direction and like their goal or we could have okay here's another idea. <laughs> we could have it that they're what they think they're going to do is destroy the tattoos and that's what they think they need to do okay and it ends up like in the moment like the surprise or something i don't know i think i'm adding too much but like <laughs> that, they, that they actually need to purify it i don't know um huh. but I like the idea of purifying i know that you love the idea of them keeping a tattoo so it's cool to just be like Basically, the old tattoo is bad. The new tattoo is good. And then and then our question, guys, was like, what would be the difference? How would they look different? Would they be like, because they already have the Griffin tattoo. So it's not that they suddenly have, um, you know, both right. 
sides in them. Although maybe other people's tattoos could change in that way, but maybe, okay. So what if the, okay, this is just, again, like one of those weird things where I just throw it out there and see what it sounds like. Oh, what if the tattoo is very binding and it's very clearly like if it's around the arm, for example, it's wrapping and strangling. And then like, whatever the flip side is, it's very loose and freeing and open or like, okay, what if the Griffin, it's like wings are down and it's all like trapped and whatever Sphinx like, and then it's like flying. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it like sh shifts into like a new, like, yeah, form or whatever. It's cheesy, but it can be fun. Yeah. Well, and um, I see some other ideas. So like Amber oh, says, yeah. what if the high tower moment could be that the purification doesn't work? Oh. So again, so like they start in one direction, but then they realize they have to go a different route. I like that. I really like that. Um, so that direction, just sounding it out. So that would be like the new plan would have to be then getting rid of it all together. Is that kind of what you're thinking, Amber? Maybe. Um, Kelly says maybe a piece of their tattoos are missing. Oh, I love that. So like basically they've only ever gotten part of it and that's why it's binding. Oh, okay. So like just following that trail really quick, say that they, cause Brittany, you've said this before, but you said it better than I'm probably going to do it right now. But you said that like, they're all from one side or the other. So their tattoos, they're all going through the ceremony for only their side, so to speak. So like the earth tribe is only doing one part, you know, like, okay, let's make something up. Say there's water and fire. Um, just for example. So the earth tribe probably would be going through water. I don't know mm -hmm. what matches, but anyway, they're going through the water side. They're doing like drinking something. And then the sky tribe's going through the fire side and they're doing, they're burning something. I don't know. You get the idea. Not those examples. They're horrible. But then if they do both and they complete a full ceremony, that's when they truly get what they need. And so like to take the tattoo part, it could physically show that their tattoo fills in somehow. Right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, so that would be where it's more of like a choice for the tribes that they mm -hmm. could get their other side by doing yeah. a certain aspect. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So then, but then the high tower moment with it not working, how would that fit in? Because I really love that. Yeah, yeah. No, I like the shift. Um, let's mm -hmm. see. JJ says one tribe could have a certain color tattoo and the other had a different color. Then the new tattoos have both colors. Mm. Um, when we sort of, yeah. the only thing is like, we sort of have, I'm not against the colors, but <laughs> like they do have each part that they need. It is, mm -hmm. it's just like the completing. So that's where like the Griffin idea came in mm -hmm. where like, they just, they need that other part of right. the tattoo where it's like, it's not just the land creature. It's not just the sky creature. They need like the morphing. Yeah. Um, we figured out that like the only reason that Laura and Thera have it is because their parents are from both. So it like came through their blood. Like they couldn't help but have both. Right. So we're like opening it up for everybody else to have both at the end as well, which I really love. Um, we just need some destruction in there somewhere. Yeah. It's a so battle. We can work our way backwards. Like we could start with the final image. Like, yeah. It is our final image of them without a tattoo, you know, standing out in the world, like we're free, which I don't know, kind of feels really open-ended to me and unsure. Or is it um, a brand new tattoo? Like somebody said, um, it gets filled in or something like that. Um, I think it was Leslie said, you get like an outline tattoo, but then it's like filled in. It's like way stronger and more of a full animal kind of like if you guys have ever done a real tattoo you have to like go back for the more intricate ones and fill it in literally and shade it <laughs> <That's> um, <true. laughs> so you could like look at it almost kind of like that like everybody's got these outlines and then all of a sudden it's just more free somehow mm -hmm. so. yeah <laughs> no, I think that that could be cool um I think too, we sort of need to know what the advisor's plan is. True. Um, I think mm -hmm. we're, we're a little, we know part of his motivation has been to become the, the leader of the Sky Tribe, right? But mm -hmm. I think we also, with that, I think he wants to be leader so he could finally get rid of the other tribe yeah. in the way that he thinks it should get, get rid of. Them. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Um, um so like why 
how do they stop him? Like, how is he planning to get rid of the other tribe? Um, and how do they stop him? And at the yeah. same time, like purify or destroy or mm -hmm. whatever the tattoos. Um, what if these tattoos are more than just shifting. So what if he, okay. So what if his ancestors, not him, cause we're saying like centuries, but what if his ancestors first put it on and they've been adding to this ceremony ever since and just finding people more and more. So what if the advisor guys like trying to put on like an ultimate binding that makes them like his slaves or something? Like, I don't know what it would be, but what? something that literally controls them even more. So what? Go ahead. No, finish. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, that's all I have. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if his ancestors or like he has it in with the priests or like whatever, mm -hmm. he knows how it all works. He yeah. could be messing with it even more yeah. in order to then make all of the tattoos of the other tribes submissive to theirs. And I think, guys, yeah. we've had this like <laughs> you know, sort of dynamic between them two where like the um, earth tribe has been more um, like had better living situations. Like they've been more fruitful. They've, they just live in better accommodations. They've yep. had sort of like a leg up against the sky tribe and the sky tribe has been more like gypsies and like, just like not really having a home and like yeah. scrounging around. And like, so this tribe sort of raising up to then make the other tribe, like their slaves or something to that effect could be really cool. And maybe he's trying to manipulate the tattoos yeah. in order to make that happen. And maybe the only way to like stop him from making that happen is to destroy the tattoos. Oh, I like that. I like that. Oh, but maybe they try to destroy them, but then it doesn't, instead of destroying them, like it fixes them. I don't know. Like you would go. Yeah, yes, yes, Cause I like that. I'm definitely finding myself leaning towards the fixing, even though I know that I originally wanted destroying, but I like, okay. So have you guys ever seen, uh, I think it's Prince of Egypt where there's like glyph glyphs hieroglyphs whatever that word is um and so in the movie they're like moving along the wall so they look like hieroglyphs you know they're a little bit more symbolic looking and very much like sphinx style um but then they move and they shift and they do stuff for the storyline anyway my point of all that is that what if um what if the tattoo like the way that it was literally impacted the person's life. So if the evil advisor is literally putting chains around their tattoo, then they're restricted almost and in chains, so to speak, or like, yeah. like, again, like if they, um, if the Griffins are very much like bowing down and subdued in the beginning, well, not griffins, but creatures. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. and then they're very much free and open. So like their tattoo could kind of symbolize the freedom. Yeah. 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 It could symbolize other things. So if this ceremony um, puts control in different levels on them, that it could symbolize what that control is. Yes. Whatever he's trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I'm working this. I'm just going to see what other people. Yeah. Let's check out the. Are doing, yeah. In conjunction with this. So Ingrid's saying maybe the corrupted ceremony added something to the tattoo, like an mm -hmm. outline or something. And when it's removed, the restriction is lifted. Um, awesome. And then Leslie says, maybe he's trying to destroy the other tribes section of the sacred place or the priest so that, so the girls can purify and tackle him at the same time or place. Yep. We like, yeah, that sort of all happening together would be great. Yeah. Yep. Um, Melinda says, I think they should both survive and get to know each other in the new world. Kill the love interest. <laughs> oh my gosh. Speaking of killing people though, maybe we should kill the advisor. Yes, we definitely talked about killing the advisor. And I think we also had this moment, I don't think we put it in our notes, but we were talking about maybe there's this place, like I think the, like the B story sacrifice, where maybe he dies, maybe he doesn't, but maybe the advisor goes after Lore, and that's like Bjorn's moment where he finally like steps up and is like, no, and like tries to like block his dad. And then like the advisor like hurts his son and that's when lore like comes out and it's just like mm -hmm. ah you know like yeah. and maybe that's when she transforms into the griffin for the first time in front of everybody and like mm -hmm. there's like the full-on battle out between the advisor and lore and you know maybe she has to work with Thera. i don't know but like, like they up and then she obviously like, wins <laughs> right yes yeah, i love that that's a cool idea 
Uh, and then Leslie is liking the idea of removing an outline as well, what Ingrid said. Cool. Uh, but then Jackie is saying if the outlining, with the outlining thing, won't they still have only a lion or eagle? So that does kind of pose a bit of a plot hole because um, it would be one or the other. Unless you're talking like complete removal, which we still haven't decided on. So I guess that's why I'm unclear because we're kind of waffling still. Right, right, right. Yes. His motivation could be like the brother from Aquaman. What's um remind me what his motivation is because I've seen it, but I cannot think. I know that he seems like a jerk at first, and then he no, Are I don't you talking about the advisor's motivation. Um the he's saying or Great Fry is saying um his motivation could be like the brother from Aquaman. I think the advisor right, so yeah. the advisor's motivation could be like the brother from Aquaman. Okay. I think so. so you're saying I have some good in him, I feel like. I think. Oh, okay. Maybe. I can't remember. Maybe. <laughs> I haven't seen I haven't seen it yet. Um but yeah, sort of expound a little bit, maybe without giving major spoilers yeah. to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um uh, Leslie says, so is the purification that they're all the same or just that they have more abilities, options, freedom? Mm -hmm. um, I, Yeah, it's a good question. I think not necessarily the same, but I think like just, yeah, having the options. Um, we were playing around, around with the idea that everybody could be a griffin, but maybe not everybody is the same griffin. So like mm -hmm. they're part, one is part lion, part eagle. One is another is like part raven, part wolf you know yeah. like they're just you're always having some kind of combination of that but there are variations yeah um and can I just say something that kind of came from that when you're saying like okay I don't know if I'm making any sense but as I was reading your comment I realized that it ultimately it needs to speak to their theme right our ending needs to be coming full circle on what they need to learn and what they need to learn is i I think it's kind of acceptance. It's kind of um, being okay with who they are and and helping other people almost be okay with who they are. And so if they're getting rid of their tattoo, they're getting rid of part of who they have been. So I almost like the idea of keeping them just because then it's not getting rid of it. It's accepting it. You know, it's kind of completing the circle of their theme. So coming at it from that way, what do you think, Brittany? Yeah, no, I've, I, I've yeah, sort of felt like, them purifying it or keeping it in some way yeah would be good but then you could also have like the choice you know mm -hmm. where people can choose to to purify yes. um um or not and that's where we can have this like still divide even though mm -hmm. there's like been some kind of solution i like that okay so nailing down that so keeping it purified and then and then also the fact that like you have to do something active to get the other side kind of is what you're thinking. Um, so even though they fix it and they purify, so to speak, um, you still have to go through it to get the right. <laughs> right, right. right. That. What do you okay. guys think of that? I'm just going to make the note in the meantime. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. While you're doing that, I'll read a few more comments. Um, so let's see. Oh, we have a fun one. Boy crush must live. <laughs> um, let's see. JJ it says could really hurt though. Like we could like really like, yeah, it'd be really bad for him. Like maybe yeah. he his wings or something, you know. Oh, like. Yeah, give. Oh gosh, yeah, we could definitely hurt the guy. I mean, he's been doing some bad things, so <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Shawnee says maybe the tattoo changes and combines into both tribal images. So yeah, Shawnee, that's kind of what we're leaning towards. It sounds like. Um, and oh, you say two color scheme. The second comment after that, in that, in a way, after destroying the person that is trying to destroy them where both tribes become one joint tribe. So yeah, I think ultimately, I don't know about the colors because colors could totally come into play. A lot of cool things could come into play with tattoos, but ultimately I think it would have to at least reflect the other side. So they've been divided. One side's tattoos are all the lion-esque and then the other side is all sky or earth and sky, I should say. Mm -hmm. so it would need to reflect all the earth people getting some sky vibes and vice versa. Yes. That would be the ultimate goal. Um, and so then like Brittany, you were saying, we need to figure out what the advisor is trying to do. That's like the opposite. Is he trying to make it maybe impossible to do that? Like maybe he could be trying to divide it completely forever. Um, 
Mm. Not sure mm-hmm. how though, without knowing what the ceremony is. Right, right, right. It might be time to finally nail down what this ceremony actually is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna put options for his motivation. Okay. He wants to um, enslave the other tribe. He wants to destroy the other tribe. Mm-hmm. Or the last one you just said was that he. Oh, um, that he uh, wants to make it impossible to merge them ever. Possible to merge the tribes. So that gives you that sort of countdown vibe. Okay. All right. I made some notes. So we need to know. Hmm. I almost want to work through these backwards. That sounds weird, though. It might be a very bad idea. But like, I almost want to know like what the actual right plan is, and then work backwards to the high tower and to what the the attempted plan is. Yeah. Um. But that might be a bad idea. I'm just being no. honest. I think I think that could definitely work. Um, yeah. So, guys, what do you think is like? What actually fixes everything, or yeah. creates this place where at least they can choose to fix things? So, I think we know we want the death of the advisor. We want this like all out. And I'll just say like the last beat again. We want yeah. action. The hero um, puts their bold and innovative new plan into action. Um, there, there's a point that you're wondering if they're going to fail. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a flashy end, <clears throat> pulls the entire story, like the message of the story together. Um, it's right after like they've dug deep down. So if they're learning the theme, right? Lore, I think you were saying this before, Bethany, it's like Lore and Fira learn um, to accept their, um, who they are, yeah. right? Yep. Um, so I think in the very, very beginning, we were trying to go more for like overcoming fear or yeah. finding courage. And it's just like, it's becoming this like acceptance theme. So I think we're just running with it at this point. Yep. Um, they need to they accept are, who yeah. they are and they're, they have this Griffin ability, but I think Laura has been trying to hide, right? Mm-hmm. So Laura, Laura needs to expose herself. Yep. Basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and her gift and, Fira needs to learn um, or needs to like prove that she's good enough, like show that she's good enough the way she is. Mm-hmm. Um, and also um, on that note, Jackie's saying like, if their theme is acceptance, then wouldn't the fullest form be total freedom? But I actually think um, their theme, the acceptance is both themselves, but also the other tribe because there's been so much hate there's yeah. so, so much like they are wrong kind of vibes on both sides. Like they are wrong. They are wrong. Like we hate each other. So it's almost an acceptance and emerging of um, the earth tribe, accepting the sky elements that have been in them all along. So that's accepting a part of themselves that they've refused to accept. So almost the tattoo is symbolic of mm-hmm. like, I have this on my arm and I'm proud of it or not on the arm, but wherever. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm really coming around to keeping the tattoos now that I said that. <laughs> some version, some version. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So in this, I think we need a battle right between the hero and mm-hmm. where it's just like, cause we've had this like team element maybe earlier, but now it just oh, yeah. comes down to like lore, Thera and the advisor. Okay. Um, is there this bat? I'm seeing maybe like a battle, where lore like goes after the advisor and maybe thera because of lore's like courage to expose herself you know like sees that lore is like faltering and like is able yeah. to step in and this is where maybe thera almost dies or dies <laughs> you know what I mean? um yeah could be i'm open to it um so yeah basically you're saying like it all comes down to so we're in the execution of the new plan where um there's the climactic finish and the message so it could almost be like this is cheesy but you know the hero versus villain fights where they're talking through their fight and kind of saying the theme (laughs) almost (laughs) like like he's like you don't you shouldn't exist and she's like kind of embraces who she is finally like in front of everybody like this is who we all are and in some way shape or form everyone's watching this so mm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like that line actually like you shouldn't exist like sort of like you're an abomination kind of yeah, yeah exactly like this isn't right um but then it's like 
no, this is who we are and we need to accept it. So she's actually, as she's kind of preaching the message to everyone else, she's saying it to herself. Like she, she could even be finally coming into that and we could resonate with like, oh yeah, this is who you are. And oh my gosh, yes, thank you for accepting it. We could just be like power moment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And maybe like, yeah, fear is like, maybe been a little on the sidelines, like, mm -hmm. you know, and like in that moment, she has like the courage to like out her own yeah. like Griffin. And like now with the both of them, like battling the advisor, they're able to like overcome him. I like that. I like the idea of sidelines, especially. You should definitely add that to the notes because it's kind of like a vibe of the break into threes when they figure out they should work together. So she's kind of accepting this other side in other people, but maybe she doesn't accept this other side in herself until the end or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, you guys, what do you think of this? Let us know if this is working because I have no idea. Geraldine says yes. <laughs> Good. So should we work backwards? Is that enough to start working backwards? Because we've got a lot of points to get through. <laughs> yeah. Um, what time do we finish again? Eight, right? Or at the end of the hour? Yep, 40 minutes. Yep. Okay. Okay. We've got about 10 minutes for each beat, not even. <laughs> well, we um, We're doing I just want to read a couple of these. What if the advisor oh, uses tattoos to control what people can shift into? And when they defeat him, the tattoos disappear and the people can shift into anything. Ooh. I think, yeah, I think we're moving into this place where like maybe the tattoos do disappear, but maybe they reappear as Griffins. Like, you, you know, um, I think people are saying, yes, love the idea, Brittany. Um, I think that was the Bjorn thing. I think that was all coming in when he, yeah, boy, Christmas live. Um, <laughs> maybe the tattoo changes and combines into both tribal images. Uh, oh, I think you read some of that already. Um, okay. uh, last one before this one that you read though, or you were saying, where, where did you find that? Read that to me again. Cause that is a really good idea. The one right before the last one. Uh, oh, if you you have yeah. Yeah. So uses the tattoos to control what people can shift into when they defeat him. Yeah. So, so somehow, yeah, the tattoos are controlling that. Yeah. Um, maybe they go to remove them. Um, and that, but we could, if we wanted to, we could bring them back in the purified state. And that maybe is something that they didn't realize that they could do. Yeah. Um, yes. I'm loving this. What if, what if they weren't even the same like material? So if the visor is using tattoos, what if he's like mixing the ink, so to speak, and he's putting something in it and then it needs to have something else in it. This is getting very specific again, but um, <laughs> it, it kind of goes along with that purifying idea, like bringing it all back to like, maybe it's not the way the tattoo looks as much as it is, is what's in it or what they're ingesting or what they're doing to themselves. Like he is the advisor. I like the idea of him using the tattoos and controlling people. Like he put something in it. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, yeah. That yeah. Was a good idea. Yeah, there's something within that. I also just saw Amy's note, which I think is yeah. good. And it just depends how we're interpreting things. But Amy says, I think abolishing the tattoos, period, because people are finding their worth in the tattoos that they should mm -hmm. find without it. Um, okay. And so. A full acceptance could be that it's like even the Griffin tattoo like isn't who they are. Okay. Um, Man, so, I can see both sides. I can totally see where you guys are coming from about removing them. Right. I, I think it's either like, are we saying, yeah, like, are we looking at the tattoo as like a label that is like mm -hmm. a bad thing, like even if they're combined? Or are we seeing it of like, well, we sort of have like two sides of ourselves and mm -hmm. like, we only find, you know, harmony when we like merge them both. Like we accept both sides. Like it's yeah. sort of what message do you want to like focus on? Um, I think I like the idea that if the mess, if the tattoos are gone, then the message is that we can't be putting labels on people. I like True. that a lot. Yeah. If, if we want to say that it's more about like finding like the, the harmony between the two sides of ourselves, then, um, then I like the idea of keeping them together. Okay. Okay. Shoot. I like. What do you, what do you think? I I actually really like both of those messages. It's almost like, okay. To be honest, 
if I were like actually writing this, I would probably write down both and and brainstorm both options and see where the story kind of takes me. Yeah. To be honest, because it's almost like it's going to come out as you write it. You're going to be like, either you're writing it in the beginning and it's so clear that it's about the two tribes and maybe there's some cool, um, just some really cool themes about honestly things like racism and like fighting it and that people can relate to in our current culture that you're like this, this lesson really needs to be honed in on. And I really feel like this is the point, or it could be about this personal deep inability to accept themselves. And it could be that message that starts coming through. So it's really, Honestly, this would be one of the points where I would want to stay really loose and just keep a loose grip on what it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I do think that we we've kind of solidified like whether they um, whether they get rid of it and it never comes back or they get rid of it and it does come back different. They are getting rid of it. I think we've got a little bit more solid there. Potentially, because then I didn't see this after, but Amy said. Following her comment, she said, later on, if they learn this lesson, the person has a new tattoo and it merges all on its own. Oh my so God. Instead, instead of it choosing, like it just comes out of you naturally. Um, I like that. And then Leslie says, after that, one tattoo on each arm after going through the purifying process. So maybe Lore and Thera, because they're griffins, mm -hmm. could enact, were the only ones that could change things. But if both, if a person wants to like accept both like they get they've had one half and now they get the other okay that's another idea Interesting. Um, or spiraling off of that idea what if so it was originally in like a private place right like not necessarily a tramp stamp but like on her on their bum but like so, like maybe an ankle or on the bottom of the foot or or like a part of the arm or shoulder that's not visible so what if the the return of the tattoo, so to speak. It sounds like a movie. Um, <laughs> what if the return of the tattoo came into a much more public, like I'm proud of this kind of place. Like I don't know, the neck or I don't know where, maybe the hand or something like that. Right. right. Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so it transforms or it changes position the kind of? to a more public place. Yeah, lots of. Yeah, what he says is the advisor from the Sky Tribe. Maybe he's planning on using the power to bring the Lion Tribe down since they're better or at least better off. So, yeah, he's kind of wanting to flip roles and become the better tribe for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So maybe part of it is he's shifting the power. Yeah. Through whatever he's trying to do. I like that. Yeah. And, yeah. oh, it just scrolled. T Terea, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right. I'm so sorry if I'm not. Uh, but she says the I've missed some of this, so I don't know if it makes sense. But maybe each group has something or wears something um, like metal or jewelry from birth that suppresses the other half of the tattoo. And then Shani kind of followed up with, or maybe like a potion suppresses it, or a magic spell suppresses it, um, and it gets rid of the thing that allows the rest of the tattoo to manifest. So that kind of plays into what somebody said earlier, where the tattoo is a natural part of them. It's not ultimately from the ceremony, but it's if we went this route, it would be like a thing that is going to happen no matter what, but maybe the ceremony is actually suppressing something. So that's a cool direction we didn't think of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if the tattoos go away, Jana says they could come back as people choosing what tattoo fits them better. Maybe they want to be a dolphin. <laughs> I like that. That was the one thing just like to put yeah. it out there, like very early on, we were like, oh, they're going to be twins, blah, blah, blah. And then somebody was like, what if they're actually like triplets? What if there's like yeah. a water? And we were like, maybe there's this whole water tribe. We don't know <laughs> about that we find out at the end, but I don't know how all of that would fit into this. But, um, but yeah, like that's the one part of like the animal kingdom we haven't really like right. played around with is like the sea creatures. So it's like, should we have that as like a spinoff? Like for some reason, we don't know. Um, okay, hold on. Janice says, if the tattoos go away, they could come back as the people choosing. Oh, did you just read that? That's the dolphin one. Yeah. But then right below that, Shawnee has a comment. Okay. If it merges and changes, we could say it's still her and her hereditary tribal mm -hmm. thing, where after it changes and the old is destroyed, it can be an acceptance thing for both tribes as one whole. I got lost a little bit reading it out loud. Did did you get? I think saying, I think Shani's kind of talking about acceptance as a whole is a really good concept. And the idea of, like Jackie says right below that, merging 
the idea of merging them together once you accept both. So it sounds like you guys do like the ultimate, the combining idea of all our options where um, there's, there's still some bittersweet, like maybe not everybody's okay with this and not everybody wants to merge because there's some hatred, but most of the, the people merge and they take on this new, um, new tribe, I guess. Mm -hmm. Urban tribe. Right. Which again, goes back to like the choosing of it, mm -hmm. um, which means I think that again, the choosing is like, they are accepting yeah. themselves or their true selves, right? Yes. Um, yes. Potential. And accepting the, yeah, everything that they hated. And it literally will be um, a divisive thing almost because some people will be like, no, I still hate it. And that's not who I am, you know? So it will be like very much, um, what's that kind of ending where it's like not everybody agrees? I guess bittersweet. Bittersweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like there is like a term though to that. Yeah, I can't think of it where it's just not a happy ending. It's like the opposite. But I mean, I, I feel like I should have a happy ending. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, tragic would be totally bad. Yes. Right. But that bittersweet is. does have that, like, well, happy, but there's still bad things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Ingrid also said, also, I guess, since the reason why Laura and Thera are special is because the corrupted ceremony wasn't made to handle their situation, their parents mm -hmm. are from both tribes, so it broke. Ooh, I like that. Um, so you're saying it broke when they did their ceremony or they're able to break it because of who they are i like that it broke when they did theirs because what if there was some hint like that would lead up to this high tower surprise or one of the finale points where they could like talk to somebody else and they could be the other person could be like well my ceremony went like this you know a b c basic and then laura thera will be like wait ours was like a b c d e f g and like all these other things happen and what you didn't have that and then that's when they could finally figure out the new plan mm -hmm. they ultimately need to have <laughs> yeah all right so did their situation yeah while you're typing i want to read a few more um Jana says, what if the advisor is a griffin too? So he chooses his shape based on which tribe he is with. So yeah, playing both sides. Nice. Um, so he obviously does know about it. So the question would be, if he knows about it, why wouldn't he be a griffin? He probably, unless he truly, truly hated the other side so much, which he probably does. Um, which well, maybe does know though that like the griffin is possible mm -hmm. and that's what they're supposed to be and that's where like he yeah. has such like a deep-seated hate that he's just like yeah i never want to be like combined with them like yeah like that word you used earlier it's like an abomination this is the worst possible thing that could ever be kind of right right yeah. right um yeah somebody with that yeah. bias and hatred um would definitely make a good bad guy so that makes total sense yeah <laughs> um shawnee says it could still take centuries for the entire tribe to come around but this could be a good start for them so yeah exactly right. that's a really good way to put it like it's the beginning of change not a full immediate instant gratification change <laughs> right 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 yeah amber okay. says be an elitist that totally sounds right <laughs> mm -hmm. right 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 so like should we, we can sweep backwards um, or did you already start doing the dig deep down? I see you typing cool things. <laughs> so I think, yeah, cool things, but I can't spell. That's okay. Oh, <laughs> we, I, I've never said this, but we are using um, Google Docs for like all of our questions and notes. So we just type the stuff that you guys say um, right into Google Docs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're ever brainstorming or working with other people, we definitely suggest mm -hmm. or writing a book with another person. Google yes. Docs is like super helpful. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think if we're going to this place where the execution of the new plan is that they battle, uh, they let out their Griffin side completely. They battle the advisor. He dies. And like somehow from that, um, they're able to enable like the other, the, their tribes to choose to join them. Mm -hmm. as Griffins, right? And like let their tattoos morph or change or accept the other side or whatever we're going to do. Yeah. Then I think the dig deep down is probably like that point where it's the debate when they think they have nothing left. So they can't know yet 
that this is how to fix it. Right. So no. I'm deciding like, oh, what if this is the conversation that they have with somebody who tells them what the what the um, dream ceremony was for them? And it's the, the the light bulb moment where they're like, wait, so it's been wrong for you. But when we went through it, it kind of broke, like Ingrid said, and we did it the right way. And like maybe the dig deep down is like. Well, but they have to have action, right? Do they need to be active in the dig deep down? I think they do. Yes. That's the only thing. Like, this needs to be, like, in the heat yeah. of action. So I think to know what happens in the dig deep down, we need to know what the high tower surprise is. Like, they've yeah. tried something. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. And now there's, like, this, like, woo, like, some kind of thing that they didn't expect would be an obstacle is. Yeah. Um, and... Um. Yeah. So what, what do we want here? Leslie says two tribes can be in a huge battle and advisor becomes, um, an abomination from sapping power. So the girls Ooh. use their Griffin forms to save both tribes from him. Very video game esque. Yeah. So he becomes abomination from sapping power. Okay. So he's like taking the power. Okay. So like you're saying like whatever, like, so the part of them that's being controlled, he's controlling it and getting something from it. Is that kind of what I'm getting out of this? Because I like that. Yeah. Like so, he's like drawing power from something. Yeah. What? Okay. Mm, what if they... Okay. So if they confront it and they break off his power, if that happens to be what it is, um, and they cut him off and they think that they've resolved everything um maybe the the high tower surprise is like no you haven't solved anything because all the people watching still hate each other <laughs> or something to do with like how you still have to convince everybody else and like and like the bad guy could be like um oh i don't know never mind i'm gonna stop because this train of thought isn't working is it going like in a different direction? Yeah, it's just sort of like, oh, this is lame. <laughs> this is it. This is boring. <laughs> I think, yeah, like can be, but like some of that can be like tied into like some active thing again that has to do with the like. I feel like okay, Leslie says something about like they're in a huge battle, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe like the advisor has instigated this huge battle, right? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe they're even like on the territory, you know, or near the sacred dream placed territory, right? Where they're having this huge battle. So it, something we can yeah. change later, but advisor instigates like some kind of battle near or on, um, oops. On the dream um, ceremony grounds, mm -hmm. the tribes are in battle. Um, and in the meantime, maybe the advisor is drawing power from, or maybe that's part of the high tower surprise, but we have this idea that maybe he's drawing power from, yeah. you know, the sacred place or tattoos mm -hmm. or something. Um, and then what do Lore and Thera initially think is going to save the day that doesn't work? That's yeah. not what we... And there has to be like a sense of impossibility too. Like they don't think they're actually going to be able to do it. Right, right. And I'm super distracted. Can you guys hear Penny chewing on her bone? She's super loud. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. It's like grinding, like she's going crazy. Move it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can hear her just a little bit. Just a little bit? Okay. I just moved her back on the carpet. That should help a little bit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's all good. Um, okay. So, so yeah, something that they can't, they think they can't do. Okay. So let's move back a few steps. So Laura and Thera were talking to the mom and she's like, you guys are from both tribes. So they're starting to accept it. Um, what <laughs> everybody's like, hi, Penny. Um, what if they both 
they start to realize at that moment that the dream ceremony was slightly different for them. So if they're coming into it, they're going to gather people around to be like, should, should they try to abolish the dream ceremony in the beginning? I feel like that's almost the, the second plan because in the beginning they would probably think what they've been taught their whole lives, that it's needed, that this is like literally the only way you get to shift. Cause that's what they've been taught. Right. Mm-hmm. So what if they instead, what if they wanted to like make it impossible to get in? What if they, if there's like, I don't know, boulders or something like that, then they could try to cause, you know, an avalanche, so to speak, or just block all the entrances, bomb it, even though that's like the wrong, it's like fantasy, but it's not the right story for bombs. But you know what I mean? Like if they, um, they're trying to first block it off instead of purify what's already in there. Mm-hmm. Right. But that's also kind of not quite what they would want because then they're not letting anybody else shift if they actually think that it is necessary. Right. Um, unless oh. their mom starts telling them the secrets. What if all the leaders were in on it that it's not that your tattoos come naturally if we go that route, that you're going to get them no matter what, that the ceremony is actually like almost um, the the hat in Harry Potter going, you're here, you're here, you're here. <laughs> what is that hat called? I can't think. The sorting hat. Yes, yeah. So what if the dream ceremony is like a sorting ceremony? Yep. And and the mom like actually lets them know you don't actually need it. So then they probably would go into it trying to get rid of it and not let anybody else in. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it's just all about like what do we we keep coming back to this, but like what yeah, yeah. what do we want the final like deal to be of like mm-hmm. are they starting to destroy it and then they realize that it just needs to be recreated, or are they trying to recreate it and then realize that what they actually need to do is destroy it? Like I think we we could have both elements, but it's just a matter of where do we want it to like add up in the end yeah Um, yeah oh I actually think you're right that like the destroying would probably come first and then like you're saying they would they would come to the realization so what if the high tower then would be like either he's saying um guess what the ceremony is now actually a place we can do it anywhere that would let them know they can't actually destroy it because he can just bring it back somewhere else so there's your twist and then that would make them realize, like, well, then let's fix the actual ceremony. And that's how they come up with a new plan. Yes. If it wasn't fixed on the location, but they originally think that it is, that could help. Right, right, right. Okay. So I'll put, like, a question about location for Hightower. Yeah. Um, okay. And then help us out, guys. What if there are some other ways that we could start them out? Um, Katie likes the sorting ceremony idea. Ingrid likes that maybe, um, oh, maybe I need to go back one. Maybe they try to purify, but it fails. So they have to destroy it. But then it turns out that it wasn't the real ceremony. And there's another forgotten ceremony. That's the true ceremony. Oh my gosh. I like that. So it's like flipping what we were just talking about into the opposite way. So the true ceremony could be revealed when the fake ceremony is destroyed. So I really like that, but that doesn't have any, we still need to figure out then a high tower surprise for that. What they originally are going in thinking they got to do. Right. So, okay. So the first thing is that they would destroy the fake ceremony. Mm -hmm. Um, Yep. So Ingrid's saying they can, or no, sorry. So my, so you're saying my idea versus Ingrid's. So the two options. My um, can destroy it all together, or they want to, but then he's like, sorry, I can just make it again. Um, then they have to purify. So Ingrid's version is flipping it. Maybe they purify, want to purify it first, but it fails, so they have to destroy it. And then that's when they find out that there's actually something. I'm thinking you mean like underneath almost, like they level the ground, and then underneath that there's like, oh, discovery. You know, there's, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> What are you thinking, Brittany? I just, I like a bunch of these ideas. It's like, yeah, just like deciding on one. Um, (laughs) And I think we're winding down on time, guys, too. Mm -hmm. So um, 
we're going to wrap up soon and like sort of, because yeah. Bethany and I are going to make some final decisions. Um, yeah. So, but um, we can do it in five minutes. We can decide a whole ending. Sure. You guys, this is not final, by the way. So, you know, we might be good proof that as you write it, things, the whole ending changes. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we're in the brainstorming phase. Um, uh, did you read this one yet? The surprise can be that the advisor being gone isn't the solution. It's that they have to leave the battle to fix the ceremony. Okay. Um, so do you mean, Leslie, like they have to stop fighting or do you mean physically leave a location? I'm curious okay. what you mean there. I would love more on that. Right. Um, Carol says that if this was true, and I'm not sure what we're referring to. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I'm thinking the sorting right above that, then Thera's dream ceremony at the beginning wouldn't be needed at all if the tattoos come naturally. And yes, that would exactly be the case. Like the, uh, Thera's being lied to at the beginning is what I was kind of thinking. And yeah, I was thinking that she like didn't actually need the ceremony. And that we were thinking that everyone's being lied to basically. They're being told that they need the ceremony. Right. Um, because in all honesty, if you think about it, um, if they didn't do it, then the shifters would have died out. So it makes sense that if you're having a magical world, <laughs> as much sense as there can be in this, that they naturally get these tattoos and that somebody just formed a ceremony around it. Almost. Right. And maybe that it's hard to control it or twist it. Yeah. And maybe it's just drawn out by something super simple. Like, for example, in the U.S. as, eight, or as 21 year olds, there's people go out drinking, which, you know, not to like put drinking in the story, but what if it was something as simple as drinking, that's like a coming of age thing so that whatever it is, like, even if it's not eating or drinking, but it's something else, they naturally start to become shifters. Like, again, kind of going back to the hormones, like you just go through puberty and you start becoming who you are as a person. So they start becoming who they are as a shifter. And so this dream ceremony literally is just like, almost like a hormone injection, so to speak. And it's just making it happen more like, like right away. Here it is, you know? <laughs> yeah. But it's like making choices for them. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. if they had, they didn't have the exactly. ceremony, the fake ceremony doing that to them, mm -hmm. then they would naturally like be who they're supposed to be. Exactly. And it would just yeah. be more slow and gradual and come into being like, maybe almost in the same way a tattoo comes into being like just one dot at a time, you know, versus right. like all at once. <laughs> right, right, right. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, Shawnee says, uh, she's talking about the leveling. Um, mm -hmm. Destroying your leveling, um, leveling it, you put um, like an image in the ground that is the true ceremony device. Uh -huh. So yeah, what we were talking about before of like discovering something. Um, Katie says, what if the tattoos fade their memory to be a dream state destroying the fake ceremony? The tattoos fade. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm getting tired guys. So the tattoos fade their memory in the, like in the dream state, destroying the fake ceremony. Can you reword that one more time, Katie? I think we're missing a word or something. Yeah. Um, Geraldine says there's a lot of manipulators. And yeah, I feel like um, it's going to be basically exposing their entire history is full of manipulators who were basically lying to them about everything, like who they are, um, which really ties into our acceptance theme again, to just be like, I haven't been accepting it. None of our people have been accepting it, but let's accept it now at the end. And I love that. So <laughs> that's a cool point mm -hmm. that they've been manipulated. Um, some people are having trouble with their internet. Sorry guys, but hopefully, um, you'll be able to watch the replay and catch up on what you missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll be wrapping up shortly. So you can definitely do yes. that in a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just going to read one last. So Leslie says, what if when the bad guy sucks their power and the sacred place space is blown away, their powers are returned like their Ooh. souls completing. Okay. Um, so what if it like takes all of the tattoos yeah. Um, but then when he dies, like all of it sort of jumbles and like, Ooh. you know, like gets sent back to them, like the right way kind of deal. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. So deciding how much power he has and 
Oh, it sounds like we have a lot to decide, guys, but I feel like we have really good starting places. So the cool thing is, um, wrapping it up, we just wanted to let you guys know that we actually are going to have um, the newsletter, this last newsletter in the series, so to speak, is going to go out with like all the, I, actually, I shouldn't speak for you, Brittany, but I was kind of picturing that we would actually put the outline in the newsletter this time so you guys would actually get to see it. Or we're going to put a link to the website so you can go look at it, but it's going to be the full thing when we next connect with you we're gonna know the ending <laughs> Yay! At least the first version of the ending yeah the first version and you know what this is just again we are doing this live so that you guys can see how completely unsure we are because i think that's encouraging to know that there's other writers out there who are looking at their story like I don't know what to do. I have no idea. Um, and like Ingrid said, yes, it's intense brainstorming, but that's how a story happens is you just keep asking what if, and yeah, and just redoing it if it's not working. <laughs> yeah, but I think like these beats, they help you find like at least a really great or strong starting point. They make you question like all the right things so that you're coming up with a really strong story that like at the end has so, like a really great punch. Um, really great meaning. Um, but then, yeah, you have to like sort of go into your like zero draft or your, you know, first kind mm -hmm. of fast draft with the idea that like things can definitely change. And that's why when Jessica mm -hmm. Brody last week was, I was like, well, how long do you plot before you like sort of go into your first draft? Yeah. And she was like, um, like about two weeks. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> adding my my book before I got in there but um like yeah we've sort of spent 10 weeks with this mm -hmm. um experiment we've gotten very much into detail yeah. and and maybe what I'm thinking at least for myself and maybe you guys can share in the, the chat real fast like what have you learned through this experience like what oh, are yeah. your, your favorite parts I'd really um, love to know but for me I think like when I plot my next book I'm gonna want to maybe give myself a two-week deadline yeah. and get like all those basics down um not go too much into detail and then do that fast draft to see how much of it really works mm -hmm. and then update my my outline based on what i learned during the first draft yeah and because editing i mean it is more frustrating that way because you you go into it having to fix everything but at the same time it's there's no other way to do it like Oh, words. I don't have the right words to say this, but like if you spend time perfecting things, it's still going to change and you're still going to have the editing that you would have had anyway. There's like, there's no way around that step. So yeah, doing it faster and just finding out your story by outlining, you know, really quick and just trying things really, really does help. I completely agree. Um, and I don't know, speaking from doing it myself, like I am editing a lot of issues out of my story, but I honestly think that if I had plotted it out super intense and I, you know, perfected the beginning so intense as well, I still would have had these problems when I got to editing. So it doesn't change anything. It just helps you get your story written faster. And that's what we want. Yeah. 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 Definitely right. encourage you guys to outline. Yeah. With a deadline. <laughs> Anything yeah. with a deadline helps you as a writer, actually. Mm -hmm. Just do that. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I think our deadline, um, we have some, both of us have some stuff coming up um, mm -hmm. in the next couple of weeks. So Bethany and I would like to sort of have a little bit of time, especially for this finale, to sort of process together a little bit more. We're actually seeing each other at BookCon um, in a couple of weeks and spending it afterwards. So by the beginning of June, I think, is when we really want to have this outline sort of finalized for you guys. And again, we'll send it out to the newsletter. Um, so definitely make sure you're subscribed. And um, we were asking about, um, are we writing this story? Um, we're still figuring out exactly how we would get it to you guys. Um, mm -hmm. Some of you have said, like, you shouldn't give it away for free. Like, you put so much work into it. Like, at least do something. So we're trying to, like, figure out if we give part of it to you for free. Um, and so at least, like, those of you that um, signed up for the newsletter that you get like sneak peeks and all, like, the behind the scenes kind of stuff. Um, but, like, yeah, we're still trying to figure out, do we put it out there on WAPAD or are we going to like make this yeah. like, a serious thing? Um, so we will let you know about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we did have a couple of ideas of how we could sort of keep engaging with you guys um, going forward. Um, I'll say maybe the first thing and then do you want to say the second yeah. thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the first idea 
um, as we're closing up this. And again, thank you guys so much for being a part of our Save the Cat experiment is that we were thinking about what if periodically um, Bethany and I could do like another live stream where it's just one at a time. And we would do sort of like a Save the Cat um, experiment book club yeah. where like maybe like a month or two in advance, we'd be like, hey, like Bethany and I really want to read this book. We're going to read it. We're going to sort of mark out the beats as we read it. And then we're, we'll do like a book club discussion about the book, um, but sort of centered around how did this author use the beats or divert yeah. from the beats? Did it work for them? Did it not? Um, and and so we can sort of dissect a book together um, with the Save the Cat uh, sort of method. So let yeah. us know what you guys think of that. Again, we would be plotting a book from start to finish all over again, at least not in the very near future. But, um, but yeah, we would sort of be looking at existing books and sort of pulling them apart and learning from them. So let us yeah. know what you think about that. And then another uh, friend of ours was writing that she was like, what if you guys did a, like a, maybe like a one video um, about how to outline a series, like maybe using these beats or whatever. So another like possible collaboration that Brittany and I could do in the future, if you guys were interested, um, I don't know if that would be like a pre collab or if it would be another live stream with you guys. So just like running these ideas by you to see what interests you. So let us know if you want to do a book club or um, live stream about a series or live stream about other fun things. Cause uh, live streams are really fun and it's fun to be able to actually connect with you guys in here. Um, what you all think. And thank you for everybody who says that they're willing to pay. That means so much because wow. literally the hours that get put into writing my hubby was like why would you ever do that for free <laughs> he's like that's crazy um and but then again maybe like the first draft could be like on wattpad for just you guys like for whoever's signed up for that newsletter so just to push sign up for the newsletter because that is where you're ultimately going to find out what we decide to do with this story <laughs> yeah oh and by the way you do get signed up for our personal newsletters when you do that as well so that you can stay connected to both Brittany and I and find out what we are up to monthly. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So definitely expect like even though these Save the Cat newsletters will be further and farther between based mm -hmm. on like the little other things that we do. Um, yeah, you'll definitely get Bethany. And I like do about like one newsletter a month. Yeah. Each. So, um, and we're always giving great content like this and doing new challenges and all kinds of stuff. So, um, we really want to resource you guys definitely follow us on our other social medias and follow the hashtag, the save the cat experiment. Cause I think we'll continue to use that also oh, yeah. to keep talking about these other maybe challenges or things we want to do. Yeah, yeah. And if you guys have ideas that come up in the future, if you're like, hey, this would be a good Save the Cat topic, let us know. You can always find us on our social medias. Mine are linked below in the description. I will add Brittany's link to all of her stuff because I think you have a link tree. Uh, mm -hmm. And I will add that as well after this video. And then I'm seeing, Brittany, a lot of people saying book club sounds fun. So, hey, I'm very excited about that. Yeah. And I like that because basically all we have to do is read a book and pay attention to the beats and then we can discuss it. And we yeah. have been this is like thinking down the line, but like if you guys know of a series that is written really well, we could do, or like a duology or something, we could do read multiple books and then talk about how yeah. it's a successful series and maybe oh, just. Yes, I like that idea to actually like learn from an example again, like book club style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. We're going to close out now, but. We just want to say thank you. It means so much to us that you've been here for 10 weeks now. Thank you for coming out every week. Um, and I guess if you guys are watching on the replay later, also thank you because that means a lot. You guys probably don't all know this, but every minute you watch on YouTube for a creator supports their channel and like giving it a thumbs up, um, subscribing, ringing the bell, all that stuff supports us so much as creators. And it lets YouTube know that like, you like our stuff, obviously. So just that simple thing, it's so, it's free. All you have to do is just like watch a video and you're supporting somebody. So go support all your favorite creators and thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you guys so much. This has been so much fun and we've learned a lot and, ex and just experienced a lot and learned a lot from you guys. So it's mm -hmm. been so fun to do with you. We really have learned a lot. Like I did not think I'd be learning so much new stuff after writing so many books, but every book is different. Every single book is different. 
<laughs> we can do follow up videos of just what we learned from this experience. And yes, oh, I like that. Yes, definitely. And Ingrid, you're so right. Time went by so fast. Um, thank you all again. <laughs> I could just sit here and say thank you, but I won't keep you guys any longer because it is seven, but, or eight your time, Brittany. <laughs> thank you guys again. And we will hopefully be in contact with you soon. But again, keep an eye on that newsletter because that's going to be the place. Yeah. <laughs> Crying face. All right. Bye guys. Bye. Have a good night. We'll see you later.